the Liberals Accessible Canada Act, which creates accessibility standards for federally regulated sectors, has made its way into the Senate for debate and is expected to become law this year. But nearly 100 disability organizations across the country are asking for changes to the bill first. The group signed a nine-point letter addressed to Federal Accessibility Minister Carla Qualtro, outlining areas where they feel the legislation falls short. David Leprofsky is the Chair of Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act Alliance, one of the organizations that signed the letter. David, thank you so much for joining us. Great to be here. So the number one concern outlined by yourself and, and the others who are opposing the bill as it is, are the lack of timelines the bill imposes. And the letter reads, timelines are essential to ensure that key accessibility measures are taken. Timelines are also required so that progress on accountability, or accessibility rather, can be measured. Do you feel as though this bill can be effective? Not the way it's written right now. It, there's no assurance it will be. It lists a lot of great powers of actions the government can take, but it doesn't require them to take virtually any of those actions, nor does it stipulate timelines, with very few exceptions, of anything that they got to do. So there could be change, but there could well be very little change. And once legislation passes, we know government attention moves on to other things. And without mandatory requirements and timelines and legislation, the risk is really great that things will just slow to a crawl like they have been uh, up to now. Another concern of yours is the number of organizations that are responsible for enforcing this accessibility. Under the Act, accessibility complaints related to broadcasting, for example, would be made to CRTC. Complaints related to transportation would be made to the Transportation Agency. Public employees have to complain to the Labor Relations and Employment Board. And all other complaints will be addressed by the new Accessibility Commissioner, which the bill creates. So that's a lot of people trying to uh, help uh, with accessibility right across the country, across all sectors. What do you see as a solution? The solution uh, is to get rid of the splintering of this legislation's implementation across these multiple agencies. Concentrate them all in one body, the new Accessibility Commissioner. It's cheaper. It's much easier for all, the, all of us to navigate. It's simpler. It's more effective. It is a, the, currently the way the bill is written. It's confusing. It's hard to navigate. And it sends key parts of the bill to agencies with, frankly, uh, poor track records on accessibility. The Canadian Transportation Agency's record on uh, creating accessible travel and air travel and so on in Canada, not a good record. CRTC uh, has not acted, for example, to ensure that a blind person like me is assured that when I, I get a set-top box, a PVR, that I can use it. In the U.S., federal legislation has required that for years. In Canada, where's the CRTC? The very agency that's got a, uh, an inadequate track record is the one the federal government is saying we've got to trust now. Well, thanks, but that doesn't work. Mm, you can see the concern there. The letter also uh, asked for the government to ensure that federal money is never used by any recipient to create or perpetuate barriers. What kind of examples have you seen of this? Well, whether it's federal money or provincial money, we've seen over and over that they give money to a college, a university, public transit, whoever it may be, to build new infrastructure, new stations, new university buildings, whatever. And then we see that there are problems with accessibility in the way those buildings are designed. Toronto's new uh, Women's College Hospital uh, has federal and provincial money and barriers within the building because it wasn't designed properly for full accessibility. And so we want the federal government, this legislation to require that if you get federal money, you use federal money, you can't use it to create or perpetuate barriers against the over 5 million Canadians who now have a disability because that's an irresponsible use of public money. David, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks so much. So we have reached out to the Minister of Public Services and Procurement and Accessibility, Carla Qualtro, who issued this statement. Our government heard from over 6,000 Canadians throughout our consultations. 74 amendments were made that reflected what was heard from across the community.